Okay, hey everybody, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips. I have not filmed a video in a long time, and I'll explain to you guys why in just a second here. So, I've been gone for I think three weeks, and I'm super happy to say that I'm in an industry where like people really care, and so um, I've been getting messages here and there asking where I was, asking if I was okay. I'm totally fine. I just took a little bit of a break because I actually went to scrapbook.com to film a class there and I always like to take a little bit of a break before that just so I can make sure that the class is awesome and really put my heart and soul into preparing that class. So I actually had meant to film some videos beforehand for the class but it took me a little bit longer for this class because it was kind of a basics beginner class. So there's lots of information and lots of cards in it. But I had so much fun filming at scrapbook.com as I always do. They're amazing people and I cannot wait for you guys to see the class when it releases. So I'll be sure to let you guys know exactly when that releases so you can see the class. Super excited about this one. I think it turned out awesome. So I've never made a Halloween card before in my life. I know four years of card making and I haven't created a Halloween card yet. But in honor of this October season, I wanted to get a video of before Halloween with my first Halloween card. Ever. So the video today is me kind of playing around with a technique on the glitter stock. This one is super inspired by my friend Christopher from Burnish Monroe um, using his glitter stock and doing some coloring on it. It's a really awesome technique. Um, before we get started though, I want to kind of flip it over to my work surface and test something really quickly before I get into the video and recommend this technique to you guys. So I'm on a piece of white cardstock here. And I'm just going to grab one of the images from the set just using some clear mark Nouveau ink here. I'm going to ink that stamp up and then I'll just stamp it down onto the surface. So I want to test if the embossing powder is going to bleed or not when I do my coloring. This is pretty important to know because you're going to be using this on the glitter stock. So this is the Nouveau Black embossing powder. Just going to sprinkle it over top of the image. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my Nubo marker in this kind of light shade, and I'm just going to go over top of that embossing powder to see if it's going to bleed. And I'll sacrifice my marker for you guys today. So you can see that this stuff really does bleed. Now, it doesn't like ruin your marker, so you can always get rid of some of that black embossing powder. There is a little bit of staining on there, but it's not going to ruin the coloring. So I wouldn't use your most prized possession markers when you're doing the project today because you do do black embossing, and then you do go in and color it in with alcohol markers. Now when I'm doing this, when I did it on today's card, I just kind of avoided those black lines and ran around it. And you can see, even on regular cardstock, you can still do that and avoid the embossing to get a nice clear tone of color. Now if you don't want to risk anything or put anything on the line, definitely don't do this technique and I'm not gonna condone it. I don't want anybody's markers ruined. So I wanted to make sure to preface this before the video even started at all. And I'm just going to kind of go around that and you'll see that it gives you a nice clean color. I did that in today's video. The tip might still get a little bit black, so don't use, again, your most prized possession markers on it if you're using just any black embossing powder. Now, I did kind of message Christopher right before I did this video, um, and he did say that when he uses his black embossing powder on the glitter stock, it doesn't bleed with the alcohol markers. So if you want to, I'll link that uh, black embossing powder down below as well. That's the Brutus Monroe black embossing powder, and that won't bleed on your glitter stock. He's done it many times, and it's worked out really nicely for him. But if you are just using your regular black embossing powder, be super careful as you're going around those lines. You can still get a really nice clean effect as long as there's not too many lines in your image, and you're just kind of staying away from them as you're coloring them in with your alcohol markers. So without further ado, let's turn down to my work surface and get right into the video tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to be using this Meowloween set from Art Impressions that has this fun little trio of cats in it inside those pumpkins. I thought that image was super fun and great to color in for a Halloween card. So I'm going to take that larger image, and this basically fills up like the whole card. It can be a main focal, which is really awesome. And I'm going to line them up in my Misty onto a piece of the glitter stock. And you'll see why I'm using the Misty in just a second here. Now the glitter stock is super smooth and it comes in a variety pack, so I chose this white color so I can color it in myself. Um, and I'm going to start off by trying some stamping. So I'm just using some regular Nouveau Black Hybrid ink, and I'm going to ink that image up and then stamp it down onto the glitter stock. Now although it did work, and I tried it several times and kind of layered it using the Misty there, it did work, but it didn't give me a dark enough image like I wanted. So you can see it kind of did stamp on there nicely. 
However, I'm gonna go in and clean off that stamp, and then one more time, I'm gonna go in with the Nouveau Clear Mark ink pad this time, and I'm gonna stamp that right down over top, and that's where the Misty really helps with that. So I can keep reusing this and trying different things in the same sheet of glitter stock, so I won't waste anything. Now I'm using this Nouveau Black Embossing Powder today, but like I said, if you wanna use the Brutus Monroe Embossing Powder, I heard that it works great for this technique. So I'm going to sprinkle the embossing powder over top, and it might stick in some areas where you don't want it to since it is that glitter stock, but I found if I tapped it down a couple of times, it'll get rid of all those extra glitters and you'll be left with a nice image stamped down. So once I've done that, I'm going to heat this up. Now I was very careful when I was heating it because the glitter stock seemed to get pretty hot and it's kind of a thin piece of cardstock so I didn't want to warp it or anything like that. So I just did it in increments and made sure my heat tool was nice and hot and this gives me a really nice solid lined image so I'm ready to color it in. Now when I'm doing my coloring today, I'm using the Nouveau Alcohol Markers. These things are super fun. They actually come in packs of three that blend super nicely together. So it takes out some of the guesswork and also these bullet points are great for getting into those fine areas. So like I said, for today's video, I was avoiding the um, black lines. I actually discovered as I was coloring that it kind of bled a little bit. So I was making sure to really avoid those and just kind of do my coloring inside the image. Then I'm gonna go in with the second color here, and this stuff actually blends like butter on this glitter stock. The glitter kind of like it detracts from you just staring at the coloring, so it does blend really nicely, and those glitters kind of help it blend as well. Kind of weirdly enough, this works better than it does on cardstock for me. So I'm coloring this in really nicely, and then you'll see me kind of go over a section here, and I'll lose some of the glitter on the cardstock. Now you don't wanna do that, this is just because I saturated the paper too much and the glitter kind of ripped off there in that area. It's not a super thick piece of cardstock, so you only wanna go over an area once, twice, or maybe three times before it really starts peeling. But like I said, it really does blend nicely and you don't really need to even go over it several times in order to get it to blend, which is super nice. So here I'm going in with those same three colors. I think that these came in a pack. And I'm just going to blend those all together to create the pumpkins. Now for the shadowing on the pumpkins, I left the centers more yellow and then I left the outsides more orange and this creates the look of dimension and kind of roundness in those pumpkins. Now I'm gonna talk you through the shading that I did on the cats too. I'm not super familiar, familiar with cats because I don't have any of my own, but I just went in and did some variations of cats and maybe this can give you some ideas to color them in too. So for this first one, I went in with some really light tan colors and I just kind of shaded it in really kind of quickly just adding a base layer of color down. And then to finish it off, I went in and created my own little stripes. Now for this, I just used a brown kind of caramel color and added those stripes in. I think this adds lots of detail to the cat and really makes it kind of stand out. Um, so adding that little special detail in really makes that cat have lots of detail rather than just being one solid color. So now for this next one, I wanted to color it in with a solid color, but still give it that depth and dimension. So I'm going in here with some brown colors. This is going to be a little bit of a darker cat. I'll go in with some brown for his fur, and I'm starting off with the darkest color in the bottom corner. And I go from dark to light, and you might want to try doing that on here too, because again, you don't want to oversaturate this cardstock. So I'm going in with the darkest color, then I'll take the medium tone, blend that right into each other, and then I'll take the lightest tone and go right from there. Now I'm not making this too dark because it's still on that glitter stock, so some things are a little bit harder to see than if it was just on regular cardstock, so I'm still keeping it pretty light on here as well. Now see I missed a little foot there, so if I just go back in with my color, I'll add some shading and blend that right out as well. So you can see you get two completely different looks, whether you wanna do a smoother look or some with stripes. And I did variation in today's coloring since there was five cats. I wanted to make sure that I got some nice variation as I was coloring them in. So for this one, I did a gray cat, and I'm just going in with a darker gray color and shading it darker where it kind of meets the pumpkin and around its feet as well, and then I'll go on into some lighter colors. And that was a really pretty quick one to color in. Now for this next gray cat, I'm moving on to the one that's kind of sitting on top of the pumpkin, and I'm going to just add some darker shading to the bottom half of the cat, and then I'll bring it up into some lighter colors here. Now for this one, I wanted to add some more variation as well, so making sure that its back is lighter will allow me to add some stripes and details into the cat, which I really love. So I'm going to add some light color up there, and then I'll bring in a dark marker again and add some stripes in there. And again, this just adds some detail into there and really makes that cat stand out from the rest. So I really love how that looks there. 
Then with those bats, I'm going to color in with some dark gray kind of colors. I don't ever go in with just a straight up black color because it doesn't add that depth and dimension that you want. So I start off with that really dark gray and then bring it into some lighter grays. And then after I bring it into the lightest gray that I have here, you can still see that nice detail in there, which is exactly what you want. And then I'm going to bring in kind of a corally, kind of light pink tan color. And I'm just gonna add that into its wings. I wanted to bring in some brighter colors to them, even though they are black bats up there. So after I've done that, I'm going to go into the cat that's peeking around the corner. And for this one, I'm just adding some um, kind of variation by making it a different color. So this one's gonna be kind of a caramel tone. So I'm starting off with a brown and then going in with some kind of amber, um, yellowish kind of tones, which I think looks really awesome with this cat. So once I've done that, I'm going to make sure that they're not just sitting in midair. I wanna add some shading underneath them. So I'm using a really light blue color. I tested it at the top of the glitter stock to make sure that it looks great. And then I'm going to go right around the image. And to add my shadow, I just kind of scribble right beneath the image and make it thicker where there's more images sticking out and thinner when there's only a few. You kind of just have to follow the bottom of the image and you get that nice little shadow right beneath it. Now I also went in with a Nuvo Blender marker. I'm not sure if this did anything because it's on the glitter stock, but I think that it softened out the color a little bit and made it less harsh down there. So once I've added down that blender marker, the background is complete and really ready to go. You could add some color to the sky too if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it. I like the look of that glitter stock and all that fun glitter in the background. Now I'm taking the Boo sentiment from that same stamp set that we used and adding it into my Misty here. This is the mini Misty. And I'm just going to stamp it down with some Nuvo Clear Mark ink again. I'm going to black heat emboss this, but the reason I'm doing it in the Misty is because I actually went back and did it twice to get a really nice crisp black image and made sure the sentiment was super legible. So having that Misty on hand really helps with this embossing on top of the glitter stock. I didn't show it on camera, but I did go in twice there and emboss that twice. All right, so here's a closer look at my first Halloween card that I created. I love that coloring on top of the glitter stock and I can create that vibrant colored scene on top of that sparkly card stock. All right, so what'd you guys think? I hope you really enjoyed that video tutorial. I'm so happy to be back, and I hope to be posting more videos this week as well now that things have kind of toned down a little bit and I can get back right into my schedule. And I've got lots of products here that I'm super excited to work with and share with all of you guys. So be sure to leave a comment down below about today's card. I would love to chat with you guys down there. Also, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I always really appreciate that and it helps me out. And if you want to click that subscribe button as well, you'll never miss another video like this one from me. I hope to see you guys back here again very soon and I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.